looks a lot. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is glue base them together. And I need the glue and it's behind the tripod. Crap, hold on. We are here with another page in our slow stitch meditation journal, a journal in which I do different kinds of slow stitching on each page. It is a mixed media journal I made that is um, the base, the signatures in it are mixed media paper and I do some stitching on fabric and then I glue them into the pages. I've been doing them for a, a bit now and I haven't filmed a lot of the pages. I filmed some, I didn't film all of them. And I got asked enough questions in regards to this and other slow stitching I'm doing about specific stitches that we started doing back to the basics kind of thing. We did different kinds of straight stitches last time when we did this page. This time we are going to do uh, cross stitches. And we're gonna again start with a plain piece of like muslin fabric here, which we've done before. I'm going to pick some different pieces that are just like sitting around on my table. Oh, let's see what I have. What do I have? What do I have? I have this one. That one might work. I'd have to pick different thread, um, but. That's not a huge problem, but I kind of like, just like the way that looks on there. Let's see, what else do we have? So the first thing for me is always picking, you know, what's gonna go out there and doing sort of a dry run. Um, no, I actually have an idea. So I have, lots of fabric around our room, including this small bits and scraps bucket, which is um, really, really full and the lid keeps popping off. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a thing. And there was a piece of fabric I was looking at earlier that might work like right there. Yeah, I kind of like that. So let's do that. First thing we're gonna do is Shorten this. The only problem when you start slow stitching is uh, if you're like me and you've already been doing mixed media type work and junk journals and stuff, then you start slow stitching. It makes it even harder to throw anything away. <laughs> so finding a system that works for you, like how I use the bin system so that my hoard doesn't get out of control is probably a good idea. Okay, so I like the way that looks. Yep, I like the way that looks a lot. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is glue base them together. Okay, so I like to glue baste everything together. I will pin things occasionally, but glue basting works for me. Um, you can use fabric basting glue, which they do make and I do have, but Elmer's washable school glue works just fine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put some on the back of this piece. And then I'm going to attach it to the blue piece. Right about there. And then I'm going to put some more back here so we can attach it to the muslin. And then for the most part, it's not going to go anywhere until you get it stitched down. Now, you may not like using the glue, basting glue. Maybe you want to just use pins. That's fine. I do find it helpful to get everything sort of basted together one way or the other before you get started. So that works. I was going to use rainbow floss. Rainbow floss will not work on here because that's going to look weird. This one might work. I have a yellow. That might work. 
It's not like I don't have a lot of floss, people. I think I own DMC floss in like every color on the planet. That's not bragging. That's just telling you I used to do a lot of stitching. Felt like I had to have all the floss in all the colors because, you know, that's what one does, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Okay, let's see. What color, what color, what color? What color would you use? Leave it in the comments below. I'm sure I'm probably not choosing the right color for you all. That gray kind of looks nice. We might use a couple colors. We're gonna leave those out. So I have DMC 3895, DMC 3822, and DMC 739. All right, reading glasses on. We are going to need a sewing needle. I prefer a long shank, sharp pointed sewing needle with a large eye. For me, that works really well. And partly because I have arthritis in both my hands, I'm not young anymore, and it's easier for me to hold. I also like to stitch with lots of different kinds of things, not just thread and embroidery floss. Sometimes yarn and stuff like that. And the big eyed needles will hold more of those things. So I'm gonna tie a knot in the end. We went over this last time. I don't know why y'all think it's weird or a miracle or I don't know. You just take the tail end between your thumb and finger, wrap the thread around until they meet and then roll it. And then grab that where it's twisting around itself with your fingernail and pull. All right, so we're gonna do cross stitch on this. And I'm filming this from kind of far away, but I will try to zoom in right about now. I'm going to come up here down in the corner. I'm going to go down diagonal from where I came up. And then I'm going to come up straight across from there and straight up from where I came out the first time. I'll go down here. And then I'm going to come up, up here and do it again. Now, just like with the straight stitches, I am not worried about them being perfectly straight and even, but we are just making little stitched X's basically. some of the embroidery floss here. Now you can also purposefully do them kind of crazy in that you can go up like we did the first time, but then instead of coming out straight up from this one, just do it like halfway. Oops. And then when you go out, like spread it out a little bit. And you'll get something that looks more like that. So I want you to attach your fabrics to your base with these little stitched X's or cross stitches. Don't worry about making a pattern with them. Don't worry about having them even. Make maybe some of them purposefully crazy, wonky. This is one of the easier stitches along with your basic straight stitches to do. It's very satisfying to stitch your stuff down with. I keep losing the end of my thread. And by the way, I'm using three strands of this, six stranded of, of embroidery floss, and this is the gray 3895 color. I'm 
Don't worry about how the back looks because it's going to be glued to the page. But if you are not gluing this down into a book, my grandmother would say to you that the back should look as clean as the front. My backs almost never look clean, although I do have to admit that's one of the cleaner backs I've done. So, okay, I'm going to turn on some YouTube and I'm going to, for myself, and some music for you all. And I am going to make some stitched X's and I will be back when we get all of this attached. I do think I'm going to cover the whole thing with X's and I might do the whole thing in gray and then layer on some of the yellow and then layer on some of the white. We'll see. All right, I'll be back.
Okay, hopefully the lighting's okay in here. It is, uh, there's a storm coming in again. <laughs> but anyway, so um, I used a variety of our cross stitches in, in sizes and colors. I did end up using all three of those floss colors. The gray I used in the background to sort of loosely with large uneven cross stitches attach the back. Then I found this fabric, which kind of had the blues in it, a little bit of a dark black gray in it, the yellows, the cream, and I made sort of this circular or sun-shaped pieces of fabric that I then cross-stitched down with smaller cross-stitches more even in the yellow. I found some pieces of lace in my pile, right there, the giant pile, of which only this is pulled out of a drawer. The rest of it was jammed into this little tiny, I know, right? Anyway. Um, and I thought those looked really cute on there to embellish it. And then I found three of our fabric words. Now, in case you missed it, one of the other million times I've said, I have some printer fabric, printer fabric. So fabric that's um, already prepped and sized to go into your inkjet printer. It has a backing paper on it. Uh, and so I will run a sheet through with a bunch of words. There are some actual word downloads in my Etsy shop, uh, the link for which is in the link tree list of links in the video description. Um, and I print them on the fabric and then I cut them out into these little sort of tag-like shapes. And I leave them a little bit big on purpose so that I can, as you saw in the video, sort of scratch the paper on the back and then peel it off and then trim them down to size after I've done that and just loosely stitch them on. So now, like with the other page, I am going to use some Yes Paste to glue this in, which I forgot to grab, so hang on. Okay, Yes Paste, because it's just easy to use the Yes Paste, to be honest. There's no, no good reason. Use the glue that you like to use. I do like this because it's not very watery and it won't like soak through the fabric to the front side, um, but it will um, stick the fabric down really well in the journal. Um, it is also archival, so it's not gonna do anything funny to the fabric or the stitches or anything over time. Make sure I don't glue it in upside down because that would be bad. That would be very bad. Let's see, I try to get it on there kind of straight too. Okay, and then I have meat glue poking out. I'm gonna grab a baby wipe. Get that off. Make sure the edges are decently stuck down. And then just let it dry and we're good. So that is another meditation journal page. This time we are just learning and practicing how to cross stitch. So I hope that it gives you some ideas of what you can do. If you're doing meditation journal pages, I would certainly love to see what you're doing. You can um, share the pictures in one of my Facebook groups the, both links of which are in the link tree list of links down below. Um, my Creative Year and a Life of Art and Self-Expression. I'd love to see what you're doing. And uh, so do share and let's help inspire others. And yeah, add hand stitching and slow stitching to our repertoire of mixed media and art journaling um, skills that we have. It's a lot of fun. And uh, that's it for today. Don't forget to support the free content here on YouTube and in the Facebook art groups how you can, not only on my channel, but all, any of your favorite channels. Check out their video description for links and how to do that. You also, of course, can follow me on social media, Instagram, and all of that stuff. Again, all of those links are in the video description in the link tree list of links, along with my email newsletter and all that stuff. There's a link down there for art foamies if you want to buy one of my art foamies and all of that jazz. So check it out. Leave any questions, comments, or concerns. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Please wear a mask and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.